Today on Little Wars TV, we war game one of the most famous battles in Greek history, the Battle of Thermopylae. But we aren't just fighting Leonidas' last stand. We'll hear from historian Mike Cole about the overlooked naval battle that played a pivotal role in the campaign and debunk some popular myths. I'm Mike Cole, and everything you think you know about the Battle of Thermopylae is wrong. After talking to Mike, we set up the land and naval battles side by side in an epic clash between our club and the guys at Mark's Game Room. It's a club versus club throwdown with the fate of Western civilization on the line. Which club will emerge victorious? It is not the lash Mark's Game Room should fear. It is my divine power. There will be no glory in their sacrifice. Little Wars TV will erase them from YouTube and the history books. You have many viewers, King of Kings, but no warriors. Let this be your end. Today's war game is sponsored by Diratia Productions and their 3D printed minis. They have some fantastic Greek hoplite armies in 6 and 15 millimeter scales, and their brand new Persian Empire range is coming out right now. They have everything from medieval to Napoleonic naval, so go and explore the options. We have links to their My Mini Factory page where you can download their files to print at home at a 10% discount. But if you don't have a resin printer, we also have a link to a shop where you can buy De Retia's ranges pre-printed. 30 six millimeter models for less than $2 already printed for you. I had to reach out to Dylan at De Retia just to double check that price was legit. And it is legit because I'm holding them right here. Here's how their Spartans stack up next to my old Bacchus six millimeter Spartans. 3D printing is revolutionizing our hobby and for the better. So get in on the action and go print your next army from Diratia Productions at 10% off. Hey, welcome to the game room. And today I have some fabulous guests, the Little Wars guys. Greg, welcome. Thanks, excited to be here. Right, we have Josh and Wyatt, they're gonna join us. They are gonna play the Persians in our Battle of Thermopylae game. And I'm sticking to my tradition of having people bring great terrain. So Greg has brought <laughs> this awesome terrain board. Awesome. Well, it looks really great. We're looking forward to, to getting uh, and play on well, it. Well, you know, this game room also looks really great, which is a shame that as the Persians, we will have to lay waste <laughs> to this club that you have here. You think so? I think so. All right, Carl, take care of these guys. While we get ready to thrash the guys from Little Wars TV, Here's a little background on how we came up with our scenario. Like many war gamers, we're inspired by movies. The 2006 film 300 is a fanciful depiction of the famed Battle of Thermopylae during the Greco-Persian War of 480 BC. The Persian king Xerxes led a massive army to subjugate the Greek city-states and assimilate them into the Persian Empire. The Greeks, led by Leonidas, king of Sparta, decided to stop the Persian invasion at a narrow choke point between a mountain and the sea. The film lays the fate of Greece solely on the shoulders of King Leonidas and his 300 Spartan warriors. Is that good history on which we can write an accurate war game scenario? We asked Mike Cole, author of The Bronze Lie and an avid wargamer, for his thoughts on crafting a war game about the Battle of Thermopylae. The biggest misconceptions about the Battle of Thermopylae is that it was one action. It wasn't. It was a joint action, completely and inextricably linked to the naval battle of Artemision, which I've described as just being fought up the Gulf of Malice. These two battles need to be reckoned jointly. And let me give you an example. We know that Xerxes sent a fleet to circumvent Euboea. This is the island to Leonidas' north, ostensibly to pin the fleet in Artemisian in place. But that path, if you look up the Europus Channel into the Malian Gulf, would have allowed Xerxes to have ships right on the north shore next to Leonidas' position. Now let me ask you, if you had ships in that position, would you maybe 
discharge Marines on the shore right behind the Anadas? I know I would. If the storm had not blown in and wrecked that fleet attempting to circumnavigate Uboea, you would have seen Persian Marines being discharged in Leonidas's rear, likely before the Immortals, or maybe even at the exact same time as the Immortals, descended from the heights. And that could have completely changed how the battle went. If the Persian fleet had been able to wipe out the defenders at Artemisium in frontal assaults, and then sail into the Gulf of Malice, that might have ended Thermopylae a completely different way. Having that fleet shadow them on the coast enables them to get supply. It enables fleet to bring fish, to, to land foraging parties on islands, to, to conduct trade and to, to move back into shore to provide that. It also enables them to protect, it enables the, the land army to protect the fleet if the fleet has to land and beach to make repairs. Um, it's just a mutually symbiotic relationship and if you're going to take the coastal route, you got to go through Thermopylae. Based on our conversation with Mike, we decided to run two games simultaneously. The land battle at Thermopylae and the naval battle at Artemisium. We asked Mike Cole on his thoughts on what might make a good victory condition for our war game. War games always impinge on victory conditions, right? That's, you know, how we decide whether or not you win or lose. So how do you simulate the victory conditions for the Battle of Thermopylae? I think it's pretty simple. Remember, the Greek objective is not to defeat the Persian army militarily. They know they're not going to do that. The Greek objective is to hold them in position until they starve. So the Greek victory condition should be timed. If they can keep the Persian army in position for a predetermined set of time, they win. Here are our victory conditions based on Mike's suggestion. Players will accumulate victory points in both battles. The Greeks will get one point for each turn they hold a hillock of Kalanis. This puts time pressure on the Persians. The Persians will want to win the naval battle and capture the hillock as soon as possible. Austin will be playing the Greeks. He needs to hold on to the hillock of Kalanis for as long as possible. He's decided to defend it by positioning Leonidas at the narrow pass at the Phokian Wall with two hoplite units. Three other hoplite units and a helot or skirmish unit will hold the entrance to the mountain pass. He has positioned three helot units far out into the rough terrain of the mountain pass to try and slow the Persians as long as possible. He is playing for time. Now Josh is playing the Persians. His plan is to send a strong force of immortals, archers, and slingers to drive through the mountain pass as quickly as possible and threaten the hillock of Kalanis from the rear. The rest of the Persian army will take up position on the coast and attack when he thinks the time is right. But he also has a card up his sleeve. Each turn he can roll to see if Persian marines land on the shore behind the Greeks. He can keep rolling until he either gets them or they're sunk by a storm. Greg and Wyatt will face off against Carl and Matt in the sea battle at Artemisium. Both fleets have eight squadrons of triremes. The Persian ships are more nimble and have robust archers to shower the Greeks with arrows. The Persians plan to keep their distance and use superior firepower to soften up the Greeks before driving in to ram them. The Greek ships are loaded with heavily armored marines. They will want to close and take out the Persian squadrons in boarding actions. We will be using men of bronze for the land battle and a homebrew set of rules called Greek fleets at sea for the Battle of Artemisium. All right, let the clash of Mark's Game Room and Little Wars TV begin. To narrate this epic battle, we have a special guest. Dear viewers, I am Herodotus of Helicarnassus, famed Greek historian that some call the father of history. Listen to me now and I will tell you of great and marvelous deeds, some by Mark's Game Room, some by Little Wars TV. Lend me your ears and I will tell you of the clash of two great YouTube channels that determine the fate of Western civilization. We start our story as the Persian army begins their flank march. The Greeks and Persians appeal to the gods to grant them initiative in battle. Right, 
Ooh. So five. Big Three money. to five. Big money. Big wow. Big, that was good, though, because you needed initiative. We, we so. need to, to shoot some more silos. Yes. So. In Greek, that literally means the naked ones, because they didn't have any armor. So We're gonna just have a bunch of naked guys <laughs> running around. I'm just going to call them naked ones for <laughs> the rest of the game. So. <laughs> so, the naked ones. Okay, uh, that so, should change your painting style. Right? Okay. <laughs> We're gonna spend three to shoot and then move this one on here. Yep. The Greek helots met the Persians head on and made them eat their spears. Are they actually naked? That's a hit. So that would remove it off the table. So we should. Flushed with success, the Greeks were heard to shout out, "Chase the Persian dogs!" That's it for my activations. Yeah. One to move and shoot the front, the lead unit here. Okay. They'll go to here, and then shoot. Why don't we give them a loaded dice? Sir? I know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I came all the way down from Pennsylvania. It's a home Nothing. court advantage here. <laughs> okay. The Persian slingers could not launch their missiles with any accuracy, but the power of Persia would be unleashed as the vaunted immortals swept forward. It was at this time that the Persian commander could be heard asking, have the Marines landed? What do I need for the Marine roll? Oh, Persian Marines. 2d6 and I need, what, a 12? So, oh, good lord. Yeah, good luck. You guys. Nothing. We now turn to the realm of Neptune and the naval combat at Artemisium. Moving speed, is that speed zero? Uh, yes, it is. All right. Yes. Oh. Oh. As a matter of fact, it is. All Classic right. break. All right. So, uh, something up their sleeve, maybe. The Persian admiral was a wily opponent and bade his captains to let the Greeks sail into his trap. And that is the there end of the naval turn. It's a uh, dynamic battle we have. Right. You got embarrassed. This is a really <laughs> exciting engagement. Yeah. <laughs> At Artemisium, Greeks are astonished to see that the Persian fleet remains still, refusing to come to grips with the heavily armed hoplite marines. Is it cowardice or brilliance? Only the gods could know. The Persian immortals continue their march on the mountain path. They string their bows to bury the Greek helots in arrows and trust in the inexorable might of Persia to push them aside. Unit that's wounded or wavering. And I got three. He's uh, he's dead, so. All right, first, dead first Greek. Greek. Let's do. Let's start on the end unit. Okay. At least three, four. Four. Four hits. See, he's gone. It's oh. Another unit killed, oh, guys. Another Greek. Oh, no. Another oh, Greek unit God. killed. Oh. What did you do? Oh. This is Persia. <laughs> Forward. The Persian admiral orders his fleet to attack and ram the enemy. Manning speed! Oh, yes! Oh, All right. All right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Woo. Fierce Greek Admiral Carl believes he is favored by Zeus and orders his own ships to ram and board the Persians. <laughs> now that I rammed ya, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna try and board this here, fella. All right, wow. there you go. And we're gonna do it with... Fierce Marines, oh, they're very fierce today, so plus three, roll it to see what you get. Yeah, change three degrees. Yeah! That one surrenders. Merciless. <laughs> Carl the Merciless. He will forever after be known as Carl the Merciless. What's happening over there? Oh, nothing. I'd love nothing. an update. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, we're just, we're just... We're just Can't walking see down. Anything that's going on. We went for a walk. <laughs> we went for this oh, walk down the trail. There's this nice hiking trail. Wind is I see that. Wind. He might die from it. At this moment, the Persians' plans are revealed. A powerful Persian column of immortals is moving along the mountain track while the main Persian army bides their time before hurling themselves against the Greeks at the Phokian Wall. The Greek helots are making a brave stand on the mountain pass as their javelins fly thick and fast. 
The oracles reveal that victory points stand at two for the Greeks, zero for the Persians. Time is not on Xerxes' side. Suddenly, the Persians launched an attack on the wall. I'm gonna pay for. I'm gonna pay for two charges with Man. support of the this guy here who wouldn't have enough to get in. Not Coming in. Nice. So it looks like we have combat. Yes, we do. On the wall. Is he not gonna take a shot? Or did he? Yeah, he already did. Oh, okay. he shot. Yeah, I missed. Sorry. Just pack rolls. Of the that would be one hit. It was a memorable fight with innumerable Persian casualties. The Spartans were heard to yell, Sparta! We have lives to spare, Josh. <laughs> There's more where they came from. <laughs> okay, and then resolution. Meanwhile, at the naval battle, the fleets finally closed on each other. But the experienced Persian sailors maneuver around and through the Greeks, who are struggling to try and board the fast Persian triremes. Two, three. All right. Oh, no. All right. Actually, it should rear. probably be zero. Yeah. Well, I guess you want to turn. Okay. Uh, the next ship down the line is here. All right. He is moving at speed three. We're moving through. <laughs> One, two, three. Turn. Turn. Sorry, yeah. Uh, there. Was three. And also conducting a war rake. All it's right. Persian ships sailed close enough to the Greeks to shatter their oars. But like Icarus, they sailed too close to the sun, and the Greeks reach out and grapple them. One, two, and then He's going in. Yeah, you got him. So Wyatt's attempting a disengagement against Fierce Marines. All right, cool. Minus one on the die roll. Yep, minus one. I need a seven. Roll seven. Hot. You need a seven or higher. This is actually, shoot. this is the move. Like, don't let yeah. them tie you down. Yeah. All right. That's the first thing. All right, who are you shooting? They cut their way free and sail away, raining yeah. arrows on the Greeks. Yeah. It's fine. It kills somebody. Who are you shooting? It's uh, purple. Uh, yeah. Perfect. Oh, oh man. Oh, this is actually, it's not looking good. This is, we're on our, we don't have too many casualties. <laughs> After a slow start, both fleets have become mixed in a melee on the waves. The Greeks were favored by Poseidon and were able to ram a Persian squadron, sending it to the bottom. But Persians have used maneuver to hit and run, slowly bleeding the Greeks' fleet. The oracles say that victory points stand at Five for the Greeks, two for the Persians. Time working against him, Xerxes orders another assault on the Greek wall. So we're gonna have a combat right here. Yep. Uh, so we did one damage against you, which is enough. But Again, his troops are slaughtered in their thousands. It will take Here's all of Persia's damage. vast manpower to break the Greek wall. Let's, let's see. They hold the wall. Oh, no. I'm getting chewed up. That wall's chewing me up. Again, the Persian commander pleads to his barbarian gods for the Marines to land behind the wall. Here's a Marine roll. Nine. <laughs> oh, Shall we get another oh, shipwreck for you? <laughs> down to the bottom. Oh, uh, you know what that means. <laughs> you know what that means. Two, These guys. both my marine <laughs> units suck. Thanks to my <laughs> naval <laughs> commanders <laughs> failing me again. <laughs> Poseidon is kind to the Greeks. He sent a storm to swallow up and drown the Persian marine. With the Greeks holding the wall and the Marines drowned, the Persians are looking for victory in the fight at sea. Guys, okay, move no, me no, forward no, one, because no, you have no, turn. And then the Persian you know, admiral senses right, that the Greeks are confused and changes his plan. He points his ship's rams at the Greeks and sails straight at them. Plus three. I have a 13! Oh! Oh! Target 
you you didn't you not, didn't need not much even to any kill damage, him. just target some. So, <laughs> wow, 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 wow. Well, some Persian commander yeah. needs to start yeah. stepping oh, up here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Someone does. Yeah. Persian Someone Navy. Somebody <laughs> doesn't like to sink Marines. Someone <laughs> needs to step up here. Oh, there's another one. <laughs> so we when we finish them. <laughs> The Persian fleet has dealt heavy blows, and the tide at Artemisium begins to run red with Greek blood. The oracles see a rising Persian phoenix that sees victory points at six for the Greeks and four for the Persians. But the Greeks still hold the wall. A third attack is ordered by Xerxes. He will need to draw deep into his vast reserves of Persian troops. All right, so that is five hits. That kills him. Um. And then actually, these guys also go away. Drenched in blood, Leonidas' Greeks are overwhelmed by the multitudes from Persia. Only one band of brave Greeks stands between them and the final hill. Now the Persian fleet sees an opportunity to drive a stake into the heart of the Greek fleet and secure victory. The Persian admiral aims a ship directly at the Greek admiral for one-on-one -on -one combat. Is it a ram or a go after him? Oh, it has to be a ram. Finish him! Oh, oh we got, we were in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> This is an important uh, fight because Greek Admiral Carl the Merciless swings his sword, but a rogue wave causes his blade to swing wide. Not so for the Persian axe. Carl the Merciless falls. <laughs> it's fancy. It looks pretty fancy. Put it to the torch! Yeah, but you killed the Admiral. That's really yeah, good. That's worth two. With the death of Admiral Carl and the Greeks falling at the wall, the Persians can taste victory. But Leonidas is still fighting hard, and it is taking longer than expected to give Xerxes his triumph. The oracles say eight victory points for the Persians and ten for the Greeks. If the immortals can overwhelm Leonidas and capture the hill, they will win. But is there enough time? All right, let's go for go for it all right here. Slay him. Two, two on hit. Xerxes, mighty immortal, slay the hoplites on the mountain pass. All that stands between Greece and total subjugation to Xerxes is Leonidas holding the hill. A heroic death or an ignominious death? Let's go with Leonidas. Okay. Here we go. Can I roll a four, five, <laughs> or six? A four! Oh! Oh! Right. I don't know if it matters, but he's dead. It feels this good. Whole, it does it feel feels good. Right. It does feel good to kill him. But Leonidas determines to be master of his own fate. He will sacrifice himself for Sparta! Oh, Leonidas. Not bad. So that's four. Makes two. Uh, and they all die. Because okay, they so were supporting. And I died too. That, the whole yeah, unit dies. Yeah. Yeah. And they're all, all wiped they're out. all dead. All wiped oh. out. Xerxes, you will not wipe Mark's game room from the plains of YouTube today. Well, that's the end of turn 10. Wow, so we didn't get the hill. We just needed one more turn. Maybe two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's going to be two moves. <laughs> the United dies 20 minutes later. Good fight. No, right. Storm of arrows. He held on. on. Yeah. He got another day. Yeah. He bought himself a day. Was it the... Well, dear audience, it appears that Mark's game room will not be wiped from YouTube. What other club shall Mark's game room or Little War TV challenge next? Let me know. In the meanwhile, rewatch the Battle of Marathon on Mark's game room and let me retell this marvelous tale. 
Hey, on September 28th on Mark's Game Room, we're gonna start to release a host of follow-up videos. We're gonna have the Battle of Marathon, an extended interview with Mike Cole, rules reviews, and possibly even an ancient war game rules roundup. Please come check us out.